thank you everyone for popping in on today's critique hour the last critique hour of 2019 um, I will be taking a look at all of the holiday themed uh, illustration challenges as well as one uh, piece that I'd like to uh, cover uh, in relation to Portrait Studio. Um, but they all seem to be holiday related, even the Jessica Rabbit looks like she's celebrating New Year's Eve. <laughs> so um, we're going to be taking a look at all of these pieces, hopefully. Um, if my health can last that long, I'm going to try my best to make sure everyone's piece is looked at. Um, I'm doing great, thank you very much. <clears throat> and maybe just do an after hours. Um, if you're tired and can't manage a class, you can postpone it for another day. You're so sweet, honey. Uh, I think it's, this is my life now. <laughs> I think if I keep postponing classes, I'm not going to have a job. So I uh, have to just bite the bullet and manage, uh, manage all of this. Yeah, uh, so... Let's just jump right in. I'm just going to start it in no, no particular order. Okay, so I would like to read through the challenge, but uh, I don't think I should think I should save as much time as I can on these pieces. Um, basically, it was the Santa and the anti-Santa wizard battles. So, uh, you know, a, a clash of two major light sources, two major colors, uh, two major themes. And I think you did this very, very well. But there are some major composition errors in this. I would like to do this in a very thorough way, um, which means I'm going to be like lassoing, editing, left and right, adjustments, this and that, and I might not have time to uh, to do that uh, with everyone. My holiday break starts today. Uh, the 24th is Tuesday. Um, I don't think I think this is really this really is the last day of the week, 31st. So it's like it's not really going to work. Uh, the 26th, though, I might do a class on the 26th if I don't get to anything today. I feel like I'm about to faint, honestly. Um, let me just let me drink some water. <laughs> okay, and um, if I don't get to anything, I'll try my best to do an offline recording at least this weekend or something like that when I'm sending out Patreon rewards. But, uh, speaking of which, it is... Patreon reward time. And for this month's reward for patrons, for apprentices only, is a how to make brushes by Istabak video. Uh, so if you're interested in get, getting that video, I will be releasing it to patrons only. I will not be releasing it uh, for free ever uh, because it is, it is, of course, the most important video I've made in regards to brushes. Um, and if you guys would like to become apprentices to receive this reward, you can do so on patreon.com slash istabrak. Okay, so you can just click here to get there. Um, and it, I, at the end of every year, I release some of my videos or most of my videos off Patreon. This year, I might not do that. Um, I would just like to reserve it only for patrons. I will do a big bundle of all of my videos released to patrons um, and uh, you just go from there. Um, these are videos are very important to me. They're my personal journals when it comes to my personal work, my thoughts. Every single individual painting that I've released this year has come with a video on Patreon and it is filled with my own thoughts, filled with my process notes um, and what I went through while painting it, major things I liked, major things I didn't like about my study. So if you're interested in that kind of content and would like to join for 2020, you can do so at patreon.com slash If you don't want to join as an apprentice because the price tier is too high, that's perfectly acceptable. You can join as a just $1 patron. That's $12 a year to help support this channel. And if everyone on Reddit joined us, we really would not need, I would not need to work with marketing. I would not need to work with any kind of agents. I would not have to worry about YouTube. Um, and I do worry about YouTube because I can't seem to hit the 100k mark even though I was climbing pretty steadily for a while there and then my channel was slowed down. It's because my channel isn't easy for advertisement. My videos are too long. My content isn't very, is very niche. So it's not very easy to, you know, monetize my channel. So they would not like to allow my channel to grow. Uh, but if you'd like to show some support, if you've had, if you have received a lot of educational material in the past, if you have benefited from my channel, you can do so. Um, you can give back uh, by going to patreon.com slash uh, Another announcement is that Portrait Studio sale will start tonight or Friday night. I could not get around to getting it uh, commenced this week. I've been very busy. Don't know what that sound is. 
think that's my fridge defrosting. It's okay. Um, it's okay. Forget it. Um, and uh, the tomorrow night or tonight, the sale will start. I will upload a video for it. I'm only just starting to feel better. The reason why videos have been delayed is because they've been sounding terrible. Um, and really, really, around work hours between 2 and 3 and 1, I'm sick. And then the sickness kind of wears off towards the end of the day. Really, really weird. I think it's because I just pump up on DayQuil and NightQuil and whatever. So I will upload those very, very soon for you guys. Um, the how-to for brushes will be uploaded very soon through Patreon. Remember, apprentices are joining. And <clears throat> what is apprenticeship? If you'd like to, uh, to include it as part of your New Year's resolutions to help build a portfolio, my apprenticeship throughout the year helps you build your portfolio. We focus on studies and illustrations. You get a month long to complete uh, your assignments. You get a due date. Sometimes you get two months to complete an assignment. Um, they are all portfolio friendly from book covers to character design splashes to uh, form studies, advanced form study sculpting, to portraiture, uh, to expression, tons and tons and tons of studies on many different topics. There isn't one particular topic. It's not only portraits. Um, and if you'd like to join me as an apprentice and help my channel grow, help support my channel as well as grow in return, um, uh, you can do so on patreon.com slash back. Okay, let's get started. Um, many problems. I love this little dude. I don't like how high in the corner he is. Let's, let's, let's do that test really quickly where we grab, uh, we make the background one value. And before we do that, we just, um, oh, oh no, they're not back. They're lost. Um, we're going to make a little spot for where the focal point is on all of these. And just by doing this, oops, <laughs> no, didn't do it in layer, I'm gonna lose my mind. Okay, really, really, really bad placement and composition. So you have really awkward dots, really awkward placement. Like I said, this was the best one, it's the nicest placed. I guess this guy is acceptable and you have all this empty space here doing absolutely nothing. I mean, I wish there was like a hand here or something, but it's just white emptiness. That isn't good. That's not a good idea. Um, so in order to achieve, and I'm not going to talk so much about lighting or anatomy. I think your anatomy is a bit off. The head size feels like it's a toddler. That's a really, really big problem here. Um, I'm going to just talk about lines of sight and composition. So a really quick, easy way to make something look good in a painting is to just try to split the painting up in an interesting way. Uh, corner to corner, triangle against triangle is really cool, but I wouldn't say it's the most interesting way to split it. This is the least interesting way to split it. This is equally as un uninteresting. Um, so when you have something like this, a cool little dynamic shape like that, it's going to help you assort, uh, sort, is that the word? Sort? Uh, sort out your uh, subjects a lot easier. All right, so we're going to give this fallen Lucifer type angel character a more interesting pose and placement in the canvas. I'm going to shift his head upward and tilt him so that he's looking up. Correct that weird head size issue. Oh, wrong brush. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this dude and I'm going to just try to create that spiral moving back up so technically the spiral is doing that. And the spiral is doing that as well. And then um, I'm going to just shrink his head size too. Okay. And exactly. Uh, welcome, Jerome. Uh, the image feels like three different compositions fighting for attention in a single image. I absolutely agree. What we have to do is try to combine them all together. So try to incorporate his fire along with his blast and just see how one side is losing or both sides are losing in this epic battle. Um, 
I love so it's going to be lots of weird adjustments for me to get through this as quickly as possible. It's really only a couple of these. Um, I don't know why filter liquify. Uh, you may want to check before it's references or so. Okay. Um, what size is this canvas? Image size. Pixels. Oi, joybus. Um, I'm just going to make this 3,000. <laughs> that was way too big, home dog. Okay, so filter liquify. Um, and we are just going to try to adjust his gesture to match that new composition. And you see these little spiraling uh, shapes here. We're going to try to recreate that spiral I drew. It's not really a spiral. It's more like an interesting way to divide the canvas because you have two equal forces fighting each other. You have to have some equal forces division to the canvas so that you're still telling the story about two equal forces. He's the equal opposite of St. Nick. So that would mean that he has to have some, there has to be some struggle to the St. Nick character. He can't be winning. No side can be winning. And it just looks more dynamic if he's thrown back on a curve. Anatomy is way off, homie. So um, make sure you're looking up references, building appropriate references, not just guessing your way through. This um, uh, Santa doesn't really feel old, so I'm just going to enlarge, lengthen his face, recede his hair a little bit more, just so he reads as an older character, more mature character, not a 20-year-old with white hair. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, my canvas is gone now. <laughs> what the flip? Okay, there we go. It's back. <clears throat> I just flipped the cam. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what just happened. I have no idea. Um, and then I'm just going to try to adjust this guy back in. Okay. As for the secondary objects, where do I place the secondary objects? We go back to our spiral. Where would it be in something interesting? Where would be in a good spot on the spiral to add in another spiral, another interesting shape? So I think something like this would look really great. And then something placed here would look great. This area feels empty. And so if this looks good, it'll look good with characters in place. This weird booby shape that we have now would look great with more characters places. So as you can see, this dude here is a little bit too low. All right, and so I'm just going to erase a little bit more this way, allow some of the dark shadow to sneak in there along this way, as if it's winning in its own right, and the fiery blast from one side is kind of doing its thing as well. And then I'm going to... Tones off, and then I'm gonna find this little dude here and place him a little bit higher in the canvas. And he does not look like he's in a threatening pose. So uh, one interesting way you could do this is just by having him start up higher and lower his head down threateningly. And that way he's still in that interesting spot. So this is, like I said, it's going to look pretty messy for a little bit until it starts looking better. See, now he looks like he's charging. He's got one foot or something. Turn those annoying spirals off. Things are starting to look a little bit better. Maybe make him move forward a little. So your compositions are bad because you guys think you can place anything anywhere and it'll look good. I'm not sure who told you guys that, but that does not work. Um, this guy seems scared. He does not seem... So I'm just going to get rid of him because you need to come up with a different thing to place here. This, he seems scared. He's absolutely useless. He's so NPC. You've got a cool character, servant type of uh, familiar for the demon Santa. And then you've got 
basic bitches for the good Santa, I really recommend you do something else to fill that space up. Um, maybe a, a character that is equal um, in subject. So you would have an equally aggressive, but kind of moving backward. You know, you got like, like a good gargoyle. And it's kind of like growling up this way and its mouth is open uh, and it's also growling back at this one and he's kind of look he kind of looks like he's backing up from this one and him his position is really really weird I really would love to see a more um, like tilted head shape Kind of like looking in the direction of that Santa. He's not really looking at us. He's got like that side view going on. Looking at Santa. Maybe he's smiling. Maybe he's got, you know, something interesting happening there. And he's just looking at that other dude. His head was way too big, way too awkwardly positioned for the camera. Not much happening. So now let's zoom out. We have a bit more of an active, interesting setup. Let's see what good Santa, good Santa's position looks like. He's not in the best spot, I don't think. Um, so I'm going to reposition him so he's somewhere there, directly in the line of sight of this character, right in the middle of the spiral. Just something easy. His awkward little feet are not in the way. And things feel a lot more balanced. And I would like to crush everything in together. So I'd like to move everything together even more. So this flame here is kind of so hot. He can like feel his beard singeing off. And he's a little bit closer. So I'm going to close this distance. I'm going to leave these cute little dudes alone. I'm going to uh, just separate foreground from background really quickly if I can. I still know how to use lasso. Oopsie. God damn it. All right. <laughs> and then I'm going to uh, separate this. Ooh, and then bring that in closer together. So there's more like closeness tension between those two opposing sides. Want to know why this looks so messy? Because he didn't do this early on. You were not organized in your approach. Um, and he did not do things in a, in a very, uh, you know, planned way, let's just say. All right, so what we have now is foreground, middle ground, background. So you can have a bit more happening in the background as well. It doesn't have to end there. You can have another clash of forces somewhere in the background that's also fighting against each other. So you can have another kind of super force in the background. Maybe it's, you know, more hordes fighting against each other and you organize it so now the line of sight is moving in this direction as well which is really really cool so you've got one one two and three all right and that's really 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 cool and you can just kind of overlap them like that all that's left for you to do now <laughs> is clean up uh, I don't think the trees are priority. I think they should be left behind just to fill in some empty space when you need it. I think what you should be focused on the most is the magic and the science, I guess, of the two clashing light sources. I think those are going to carry the image very, very nicely. You need to show the speed, the, the heated element to these characters' powers. I love the pink against the yellow. That looks great. So I'm going to try to make that my main focus. So merge down. I'm going to change that ambient color to something else. And just clean up that background a little bit. 
All right, so it's all about the distance read. Does it read well from a distance? And we're not getting this guy's silhouette very nicely. I think he should be a little bit more interesting. A gesture. And what we want to show that it's light against dark, but it's not necessarily dark, ha dark canvas, light canvas. We can still have light explosions, like a star is still very, very vibrant, even though it's in a dark environment. The sun is beautiful in the daytime, but a star has a special kind of glimmer to it, so we want to show how that's happening on one side of the canvas. Just darkening it here. And then we want to use soft brush on lighten to get rid of any major shadowy peaks on the light half of the canvas. And then just keep reusing that pink kind of as the good color more iridescent colors on the top half of the canvas here and then we're using that orange to show the fiery hell kind of color palette on this half and so zooming out it should start to look a little bit better and we want to show sort of how some of these values are overlapping how some of the good is winning on one half of the canvas And some of the bad is winning on the upper half of the canvas. All right, so this is all just soft brush. This is all no, 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 no major cool effects. It's just organizing things off a pre pre the, the designated line of sight, which is the spirals that we did, and then managing the color characterization, and then making sure that the characters that we have, if we're going to have a mirrored composition of two, it's a battle scene, all battle scenes look like this, um, that we have some kind of mirrored element on either half of the canvas. And now I'm just blending at these, at this fire, it's basically like a nuclear explosion. And now that we have this all organized, you know, we can start moving forward. So I'm going to try to Give this little dragoon here some in something interesting. All right. <clears throat> and that's it really. So that's how I would kind of work around your um, story. These are the effects and the changes I would make. And we're leaving some areas pure white. We don't want to make a big chunky section pure white if we don't have to. And there should be a point where the magic meets and that can be like pure white. But you see how cheesy it looks when we have pure white anywhere in the painting. It kind of hogs the scene. We want to reassert the, the subjects as the stars of the show. Okay. Sorry about my sniffling, you guys. I, I'm a very sick person. All right. And then I'm going to get that blue and then try to just recreate this kind of like supernova almost. Okay. Do you think the bright magic light would look better in a darker and less saturated light environment? Uh, yes, I definitely recommended a dark light environment um, for this challenge to you guys. I definitely recommended that at the start from the very first video. I mentioned this challenge. I said I see it happening as a nighttime scene because in order for this magic to become interesting and visible, um, you have to have it happen in a dark scene that kind of lets the light show really let the light show be enjoyable so I want to save these okay so just remember these we're gonna go to the original image, image size 3000 paste okay so a lot more organized a little bit like it's like four different paintings stacked on each other you can literally just 
crop the painting in one direction on all sides and it's just a different painting. It's like panels, right? Completely separated. Now, not so much. We have overlapping. No, though everything has its own breathing room, things are still speaking to each other. I recommend more saturation on this half though, um, because it's definitely you know, a, a give and take when it comes to darker, evil kind of characters, you, you make up for what you don't have by saturating what you get. So all that flame, make it the best orange that's ever happened. If it has to be a dark half to the scene, make it the best orange, and I think that looks great. <clears throat> so I'm just like hyper-saturating right now. I don't really care how it looks. We need color on this fire. It looks like they're just booming out of a big flame explosion. Where these guys get light, you know, and a lot of cool tricks, these guys get saturation. Okay. Um, so before, after, and if you would like, if it has to happen, you want to get that same explosive boom in the center, you just do that. Um, but I think it's cheesy. I think too much white use does not look that good. And you still have that big far distant area there that you can fill in with another clash of another type of force. Okay. Yes, you had to have an organized color clash. Um, just go for that orange versus blue then. Uh, what do you mean, Daniel? Well, yeah, the Santa side looks heavenly. I, 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 I would like that. I like that. I would keep it. Um, definitely is interesting. I think you do have to have some depth rules. So foreground, darker, middle ground, lighter, background, lightest, um, just so that it can help create a more believable full scene. Uh, so you can use some of the atmospheric color per half to... Uh, kind of throw things off into a distance. So I feel like I want to use them blue. Oh, that does look great. The blue from the other side is a good fog color for the dark side. Isn't that funny? A little bit of the... Eh, looks cool. <clears throat> and then foreground should be darker. I don't know how you would make it darker if this is a glowy dragon. I wouldn't make it glowy. I was just I was just using any color that I could choose that was out of this palette. Uh, how about a lens flare from the point where the energy beams collide in the middle? Definitely a plus. You know, you can always do that. Okay. So here we have a bit of a confused environment and not really sure how we're seeing this. If this is supposed to be bird's eye, but he's tilted as if the camera is level with him. That was something I was afraid of because it seemed cliche when I was planning it, but I just have to go for it. Yes, um, the orange versus blue, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very organized way of identifying dark versus light. Um, it, it's not even, blue is sometimes evil and orange and yellow is sometimes good. So it's not, there's no rule or cliche when it could only have so many colors. We can't be, we can't say certain colors are cliche or it, we only have so many colors to work with um you, you chose a devil silhouette what do you mean cliche you've already gone for cliche you literally drew a devil um so uh i'm not sure why you're worried about colors being cliche when you use an actual devil character um to represent the anti claws those look like devil wings i think he's got devil horns he looks like uh, he's wearing the devil loincloth. <laughs> I mean, you've already sailed that ship. That ship's already sailed, let me say. Um, all right, so we're just saving that. Let's move on. So yeah, here uh, your, your perspectives are off. You have eye level perspective for the camera, over the shoulder, higher perspective for the foreground, um, a complete bird's eye perspective here. If this is the horizon line, if this is supposed to be the earth, right here, this line, that's completely off. Um, so, this Santa is starting to look evil. Um, he also has 
a Pope hat. Hmm. So it feels like evil forces fighting each other. It doesn't feel like good versus evil. Um, so we're going to do the exact same thing. This time I'm just going to follow the lines in my head. All right, so I'm going to adjust. No, no, I would like to show you guys. Uh, so again, we're graying out the canvas. Shit. Graying out the canvas. And then we are deciding on some lines. That's a bit bright. My eyeballs. So we're gonna make some basic lines happen. Some interesting way to divide the canvas. Um, that's an interesting way to divide it. What will happen in here? I think something like that looks good. And then something like this here, or something that cuts that in half, or some kind of perpendicular effect. So this line could be either where the Santa is traveling this way and he's kind of curving forward his the, the the blue is like a comet so I would look up like Haley's Comet or something because it's blue and beautiful I think that's a, that's the blue one right um, and it has like this fizzy tail uh, so I recommend um, I, I recommend that and then for this bird's eye I would I would have like a, a devil that is kind of or a bad guy that is kind of um, <clears throat> holding on to, I'm just reading the comments, holding on to the reins of his thing in the jig, and then he's the one who's got this little axis here. It could be where the kids are being, the stolen babies are, and this is kind of like his chariot. And it's like a f fiery flame chariot, and you've got the blue moving in. So we're looking at something that looks like this with colors. So now that we've got our lines, let's choose a nighttime wash color. So I'm just a really, really basic color for the background. I'm going to keep those pinks because they look cool. Now on top of that, I'm going to bring in a blue clashing in this way, moving in. And then we've got why well, I'm just gonna use a different color. I'm gonna use like an evilish kind of purple. Or maybe like a pink. You know that pink they used for the evil of Elsa's magic? Alright, so that we've got these two values clashing each other and then I'm gonna try to apply all of that on top of what you did so no that doesn't work um, where's darken there we go and then bring this Uh, that seems okay. I'm gonna disable that. Disable this. Put those lines back up, and then start start adjusting. So we're gonna select this homie and just just completely move his position. That's crazy. All right, <laughs> and oh my god, this is all so bastardized. And then we've got this fella right here, who should look like he's also in the air, kind of like hunched forward, ready to, ready to, you know, stop this guy from ruining his plans. So we're gonna select this dude, and we're gonna reposition him this way, shrink him down. And he's kind of ready, you know, he's ready to to hit that other dude. He's ready to fight back. So we've got two opposing forces ready to clash. One is in the foreground, so we need to organize the depth. Holy cannoli, holy Moses. This is going to be hard to 
do. My head's already hurting. <laughs> All right. So we got the blue overlay to help correct the time of day and the environment. We got the magical elements, which need to be slightly adjusted. Uh, I need to do a different layer for Santa. Holy cannolis. All right, all right, all right. We can do it. <clears throat> all right, this seems pretty nice, I guess. Yeah, that's okay. That's acceptable. Screen, though. I don't mean I like a screen. All right. Delete that. And adjust Santa's levels. Bear with me, you guys. Trust me, this is going in a great direction. We're, we're going good. We're going places, I promise. I think. All right, it's because color layer isn't really my friend right now. I, I don't know why it, it does this shit to me. I want to make it this color. So I am going to move that down. Turn this bad boy off. And just adjust it section by section and then finally adjust the depth man this is some rough work I got my work cut out for me so we got this beautiful magical Santa here And then we've got this evil devil over here. And what we want to do with the devil is <laughs> we, we want to have him in front of the blue that the Santa is bringing in. That way we get a proper silhouette of the devil. It's easier for us to identify his shape. kind of like ready, you know, he's kind of ready to attack. And he's got his own little whip. <laughs> and this is so messy, but bear with me. This is an adventure. I will revert to the old layer and see what else I could bring in. But this devil is supposed to actually be placed here. Make him a bit bigger and more scary. Okay. So now we've got these colors opposing each other. Um, we've got two different levels against each other as well. So this guy's in the foreground, this guy's in the background. I'm going to choose that environment color again and just make this a little bit lighter. Or, you know, you can have him just peek in front of the moon. He can be a very, very, I mean, he's supposed to be visible in the illustration, but you could have had a moon directly behind him that gave us a silhouette of some kind. So, this moon shape right here, we could completely capture it, recirculate it. and uh, place it behind the Santa as a way to symbolize his importance. That way we can define a very particular light environment, which is silhouette for this dude. And we have depth silhouette for that dude. And then things just look better and better. So 
that looks a little bit better. That way we have that nice cool silhouette. All right, so it's starting to come together slowly but surely. And then <laughs> I'm going to put this fella in front, merge that down. The moon is going to be also this direction. The moon is going to throw in some of its glow and whiteness over the rest of the scene. And then finally, <clears throat> I can zoom out and just start making some things work. So this is where you come in with your subject matter. Where would you put, you know, the, the child that's being abducted, the super Santa that's going to save them, and then what you're going to do with the props that Santa's using. How you're going to bring in the magical element. I don't want to do too much. And then obviously how intense the silhouette is going to be. So I'm going to make it pretty intense because I want this time Santa to glow a little bit. Just like on the outside. I don't know what Santa's doing. I don't know what that, that's a rocket launcher or something. <laughs> But Santa's up to no good to save that child. He will do anything he has to do, anything he must do. And so now we have that glow, and I'm going to get the saturation. See how zoomed out I am? None of this has to do with characters anymore. This is all about the color language and what we're saying about the piece. And then back to saturation over here. Santa's got a rocket launcher, y'all. We've got a rocket launcher, y'all. And then we've got the devil over here. So I'm going to just reposition everything this way. Maybe put the devil over here a little bit. The devil should be a little bit darker. Kind of like sneaky boy. And oh my god. This is like the ugliest correction I've ever done, but it's for a good cause. And then we have Do I have anything else back there blocking this paint? Hmm. I wonder what's happening. Why it's not. Uh, we'll just merge it down. Alright, so what do you guys notice is happening with these corrections? What do you guys notice I'm doing? It's just objects. I'm just placing objects in a scene. At the end of the day, I'm not actually painting characters. And that's that's what happens with an illustration. It's more the objects that you're, you're treating the subjects as objects. You're treating them as kind of like individual, um, they're their own individual silhouettes. They, there's not much going on in terms of character design up close. It's all about what these objects are doing in the canvas as spirals, as, as a kind of energy forms. They're not going to do much else. So where this spirals off to could be like a you know, like a cool little dragon. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Storytelling wise, I don't know. All right. I'm not the best storyteller. How you're going to execute all that. But all right. So we have a bit more of a precise clash between good and evil. All right. So we got that light ray. Something cool you could do on, on, on this character while he's coming in. Uh, is kind of like blinding him. So you could give us a really, really cool gesture on the blinding of the devil as he's shooting in. So now we have good versus evil, light versus dark, really, really appropriate kind of distinction between the two. And then we've got the kidnapped baby, which works now, I guess. So 
you're all freaked out. So do you see how we needed an environment first? There was never going to be an organized way of approaching this without an environment. And then he could have that kind of Balrog whip thing that's going on. And he's just like a shadow. He's just like a really purpley pink type of shadow. He's like darkness, you know, like pitch from Rise of the Guardians. It's just lots and lots of darkness, and the light is just coming in, interrupting that darkness, and he's just a cloud. You can use some really, really cool cloud texture and silhouette. For scale, you can make him even smaller, and he's just like ready to, he's like bracing himself for the clash. He's just like shooting in, like, give me back the child, and the devil is like, come and claim him. <laughs> Black riders come out, you know, on their dragons, on their sky creatures, and this devil, he's got his, he's got his whip, and his whip is glowing, and he got some of the light used on his silhouette right over here. Oh man, everything's coming together, and and you could honestly, there's so much more interesting things you can do with this, but the purple I think looks great. And, and the purple and the yellow look wonderful together. So many cool color combos you guys could work with. Just merge that down and then merge that down. And then just saturate. And got these really, really cool color clashes. And then, you know, fix it, bring the reindeer back. <laughs> That's the reindeer tail. <laughs> and then the reindeer's like, Nee! And then it's like, he's got his... Egg, what are they called? What are they called? I don't know. <laughs> Antlers, and he's just like, Get the child! Get to save the baby! And then... And then, uh, so that way we can keep the head of the reindeer in the illustration, which is really cool. And she's kind of like whipping her butt and whipping the, the, the sleigh toward him. And Santa's just fuming. He's like, give me back the baby. And I really don't recommend the, the Pope hat for a Pope saving a child. It's not. No. Um, so I recommend something like a bit more like a, like a, like a, you know, a Bjorn hat. Those kind of big hunter Slavic hats, you know. Santa ain't kidding around. Makes sense that Santa's from Mother Russia, honestly. And then, um, and then he's kind of like pulling the, 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 the reins and he's like, Dun! and he's got his, or maybe one hand has got the, the reins and he's just like barely fighting against the thing because this deer is scared. And, and then we've got, um, the, the staff in one hand. Or like you know the staff. So usually I, God damn it, usually I draw the staff first, and then I'll you know, place the hand on it, and then the sleeve is flying in the air. Or the staff is going that way. It really doesn't matter. And then there's like a big billowing magical explosion. That's maybe turquoise or some kind of element. And then we've got the end of the sleigh, but maybe there's like a, a magical trail behind on the sleigh. And then you've just got more cloud here, just like a skirt of cloud, like the way the the um, the the Death Eaters are, you know, the way they kind of billow in between uh, their flotations. And. So much shit's going on. That's why I told you it's a big baddie boom boom illustration, you know? It's, we ain't kidding around. And, um, and yeah, that saturation in the back would be cool. Just some more magical element. Maybe a ring of that turquoise around the moon. Alright. Okay. Whoa, any, there <laughs> goes my pen, any questions at all? Um, yeah, no, when finding out your story, figuring out your story, make grunts and ahs for out of effect. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> for 
secret trademark pen. So this is a massive jump from where it was before. And that's because you guys really don't, I mean, this is not a little too much. This is, this is, you guys need to start um, planning your illustrations with these dudes. These dudes will help you. It's really, really cool to do that because it also, like, look at what the trails are showing us. Um, oops. The trails are showing us how the clouds will billow as well. You see that? So it's going to help us, um, you know, show the trail for the class. So for this, for this guy, so if I use some white pencil lines, I can show how I want to, uh, how I'm going to show the, you know, the, 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 the vapors kind of like billowing this way and then these vapors are kind of just the clashing and then we have all of this static floating vapor here in the foreground so I have like a direction for all of this smoke and all of this fire and all of this explosion and you can make this guy really hover over you know you can make him hover over with a really defined gesture the devil so he could be just you know crouching like that ready for the that head's too big ready for the clash and he's kind of like ready for the attack and the clouds are billowing around him so I drew him separately and then I'll just reposition him in the composition and then the moon and then Santa just whipping in ready to attack him well, maybe his head is pointed up that way. Yeah, that would be cooler. Because now he's looking at Santa. And then Santa's just like kind of drifting a little bit. <laughs> and the deer is like... <laughs> and it's like the head is weird that way. And Santa's like pulling on the reins. And he's got a, a staff. And he's ready to attack. And then the kids are just all like, oh my god, I'm going to die. I don't even know what the hell that is. Um, just like a kid in fetal position, kind of hiding their ears. Or maybe the kids are like trapped in, I don't know, what would the kids be trapped in? They'd be trapped in little Christmas boxes or something because all they care about is gifts. And they're the naughty kids that the devil has taken. And there's just a bunch of Christmas boxes everywhere, like little boxes. Not Christmas boxes, could just be boxes. And they're just kind of floating around and... And they're just trapped in there in little sizes, you know, up bigger sizes. And then he's ready to help the naughty kids because he's great. He's Santa. And he's got the sleigh kind of drifting right behind him. And you got the moon, you got the purple, you got the blue and white. Done. This is... <clears throat> this is it. It's done. <laughs> no one. <laughs> Dear me. <laughs> Uh, when and how do you decide what colors you want to use for your paintings? Whenever you want to. All right, so we started off with a basic. Uh, what time is it? What time is it? Throw a time of day at me. The evening time. We're supposed to have evening time, right? So I'm going to choose a cool evening time color, and I'm just going to choose purple. I'm going to choose like a, like a cool purpley, like, you know, like pink, you know, and then I'm going to throw that there as my starting value. I'm going to adjust that so it's a little bit more pastel, maybe a bit more towards, ooh, okay. And then I have to take care of light versus dark. So what, you know, what universal light source is up there? The moon was up there. If it was a sun, if it was supposed to be one big comet, if it, what is the color starting value of that comet? And then move on from there. If it's yellow, if it's orange, just choose your colors beforehand. You don't have to use them together to choose them. You use them later and adjust them together, but you don't have to choose them together. These People have their own individual magical element characterization. You can choose any color for them as long as you match them together later for the illustration. Um, okay, so dusk is a good time. So I can still use purple, and the horizon line would be here. And so we have some orange starting out. And then we have a yellow right at the top. All right, so that's the sky, that's the environment color. I'm going to mess around with some saturation 
and just throw in a red in there somewhere. All right, so that's the dusk, and maybe we're going to invert that so the dusk is more that way. That's an actual sunset. And you can do that. You can do another like inverted dusk. It doesn't have to be that. And then we've got in the background. So this might completely get desaturated against the blue because I want that ambient color of the blue of the sky to, to not allow this all to come through and, and uh, uh, contest the colors of the characters I'm going to use. So I'm going to leave that there just in case I need it. And then if I have one beautiful, good blue force, I'm going to... use that color there and then if I have one evil pink force there, use that over there so now I have an ambient color that'll kind of unify these together and that's just how we mess around with colors and if you want more of the dusk to show just adjust there it's not hard to match colors together what's hard is you know planning and, and making a scene look balanced and making it work that's the hard part the the easy part is choosing color all colors look good together you just have to combine them make sure making sure you're using the right brush for the right texture and not overdoing the white because white is not a color so if this is the hot spot right over here we're just kind of let it do its thing and then kind of want more of the background to show don't want it to be too dark though maybe i want more of the yellow of the dusk or something like that I definitely want more background. Okay, and then if we do, see, I don't have a universal light. If we had a moon here, if we had a sun, that would be very different. All right. <clears throat> so we would have more light towards the lower half of the canvas. Because that would be the daytime or the sun being caught in the middle, and that would affect the vapors that we have. And this is just one weird example. I don't even know why I'm going back to this example. We have the side of every... We're using the universal color on every element in the painting. See, there's green in there now. I don't want that. Oh, it's just like a yellow. gold and yellow. Alright, that's fine I guess. And that same gold and yellow was used on like the side of every thing and that's unifying it with its environment. <clears throat> this is all just really really top layer color talk when it comes to like working in an environment. You can saturate it even more. You can shift it whichever color. I'm sorry about the texture of my soft brush. This is really, really, really flame. Um, and when it comes to dusk scenes like that, you really are getting silhouettes at the end of the day. So you really do just get the, those dark clouds. You barely get any light. The light doesn't really glow that far. If we're talking about glowing lights in the sky, the best way to represent those, yikes, is, you know, just like that, like an aurora borealis. You want to just... Keep the environment dark so that most of this magic comes through. Because there's still Aurora Borealis in the daytime. We just don't see it, I believe. Because it's not dark enough. The environment is not dark enough. So the time of day allows you to interpret different kinds of things. And this could be a great composition for a Santa Clash. All right. For this one, the biggest problem with this one is that you just don't have any of the environment factored into the core shadows of the character. So it's fine if you wanted to render your elf design, but you gotta let the radial shading, look at that, now the character is unified with their environment. I'm doing that everywhere, shrinking my brush as I apply paint. We need a nice core shadow here, so cast shadow I mean, off the horns. We need some core shadows all around here. The eyes, I'm not sure why you guys force eyes to be so visible in your environments. A long nose shadow. 
cast shadow of the head on the rest of the body. I want to make that a sharper core shadow, so <clears throat> going backward. Sorry, I can't breathe. And then, well, I'm just using the black what value. I'm using the black. You guys are really overrated. Like, you guys have these colors overrated. Your palettes are overrated. You just need to believe that the environment you chose has a role in the character that lives in that environment. You guys are really overrating that, that color palette. You think everything has to be a pre-prepared color. No, you only have to prepare so many, and the rest is all the environment popping in. So now she looks like she's in the environment of this light source. And then we're going to choose the light source color and just use it on anything the light source can reach. She's going to look like she's even more incorporated into her environment. Yes, if I didn't ask you, ask answer your question, you can ask again. All right, before flat values, cute character, flat values, after. Okay, so that's my critique on that. <clears throat> I don't have time for anything else. I, this should have been posted, yes, last Tuesday. Um, I'll try to do these for the new year. I will try because I'm running out of time. And I will try to do a separate critique hour for this. But I love the colors. I love the softness. I think you did a wonderful job. You just have some really, really big issues with your um, anatomy. Um, which Abu has created a pose for us on Portrait Studio. Abu made a pose which I think might help you, but if, just so that we can cover something in today's class. The way you drew the neck, you're giving her that flirtatious shoulder, that raise in the shoulder, but you're also making it so that the neck is still in the same position. It has not been affected by the raising of the shoulders. The neck will be hidden if the shoulders are raised, especially in the angle that you chose. I think the angle that they drew is actually not higher than I think she's higher so the camera was taking and taken in the wrong angle um, the camera's too high but t technically even if we're lower we see less of the neck because the torso is in the way of the neck so your perspective is off and your anatomy is off um, because if I were to do a, a sketch real quick your shoulder line is behind is in front of the neckline where here you have them all in the same so a quick fix would be just letting the shoulder sit in front of the neckline catching more light than the neck which will actually be in shadow all right which will make more sense and then this shoulder looks like it got a big piece just cut off and then there's no collarbone, which is not good. All right, so that should definitely help it read a bit better. So before, you see how the neck was very, very, it looked like def it was deformed. It looked like she always had that crouch or that haunch where it wasn't just a deliberate flirtatious shoulder. But I'll, I'll try to do a more thorough critique of this next time. The, the arm is in front of the torso. The torso isn't beside the arm. When you're doing a realistic rendition of a cartoon character, do not use the cartoon's proportions too much. Because you're literally just creating... That's a recipe for the uncanny. Alright, so before... After... So a lot more relaxed. 
but here I would tuck the shoulder behind so it's it's really up to you if she really is putting her arm behind her shoulder I think she's just doing a flirtatious kind of hip in front of the arm but shoulder is arm is still beside torso I'm sorry I'm throwing the word shoulder and arm around interchangeably I've completely lost my mind um, thank you everyone for joining today for our discussion on compositions. Thank you to everyone who posted something for our challenges. If you're benefiting from this community and you'd like to give back, you can join us on Patreon. Um, okay. You can join us on Patreon, Sarek.com, and click on this Patreon icon. You can join as a $1 patron, or if you'd like to learn how I make brushes and get the brushes I made in the tutorial, um, and learn how to make your own brushes, um, as well as a min miniature form study tutorial that I'll be posting for this month's apprenticeship. You can jo join as an apprentice. It's a low pressure, high uh, accountability. Get it? I don't know how that works, but it works. Um, and uh, it's a low pressure, high accountability Discord server, private Discord server for apprentices. We assign stuff. You guys talk on your own. There's no constant pressure for me. I do check in to ch uh, check on homework progress, though, and we do... Um, your homework is due at the end of uh, or the first Tuesday of, of the next month um, so uh, that's always there if you ever want to push if you ever want a reason or be held accountable for to keep on keeping on building your portfolio or developing your portfolio my apprentice group is perfect for you and there's tiers in between if you don't have to if you don't want to hand in homework but you want to get the videos you can do so um, through uh, joining as an initiate and if you want to get some some of the personal work that I hand out, uh, you can join as the lower tiers. And if you want to just support and watch, you can do so as a watcher. Um, One dollar a month, um, and it just it supports the community and it gives back to the community. I hope to see you guys in the new year fully cheerful, fully healthy, and cured of all ills. Happy New Year's, everyone. Bye!